Hello, sixth graders. I'm looking forward to today. Today we're about to go into a really, really complicated thing. So I, I actually have a book here to help me today because I don't want to forget to tell you anything. So if you see me looking down at my book, that's why. Because um, there's so much to talk about in this that if I forget something, I'm, I'm, I'll feel really bad. So here's what we're going to talk about. Today, we're talking about the redemption. Well, what is redemption? Well, to be redeemed, to receive redemption, means that something that was broken is fixed, right? So what, what was broken? Well, if you remember, we remember Adam and Eve did something that broke something, right? That are, were broken because of their sin. Well, that's terrible. But God promised to fix that. And the way he promised to fix that was by sending, sending someone, a man born of a woman, and this man is Jesus. So let's figure out exactly what it is that Jesus did that fixes the problem. Well, the first thing to note is that, that Jesus was called, was, was, became a man to do this. That's, what he, that's why he became a person, was to fix this problem, was to, was to give us the chance to go to heaven, right? And so what he did is he promised that he would be willing to take on all of the mistakes that we had ever made. He was tempted by the devil, and the devil tempted him, and he didn't, he didn't fall for it. And eventually, he was killed. He was killed a horrible, horrible death, right? Horrible death on a cross. But he did that willingly. He chose to do that, to be obedient to his Father. And doing so, he opened the gates of heaven for you and for me. So let's, let's, let's walk through this a little bit. What is, what is the redemption? Well, the redemption is meant, what the redemption means is that Jesus Christ, the redeemer of the whole human race, has offered his sufferings and death as a fitting sacrifice to satisfy God for the sins of men. And by doing so, has, has regained for us, for you and me, the right to, to be children of God and to be heirs of heaven. You and I get to go to heaven because of this. If you want to say it really briefly, what it means is that Christ died for our sins. That'd be the thing to remember. Christ died for our sins. Um, it was because Jesus loved his father, because he was loved him so much that he would obey him in everything, that whatever God sent to him, he would do it. Even to the extremest, most horrible point of dying on a cross, that all of the disobedience of Adam all of the others who have sinned since, even all everyone who's ever listened to the devil and listened to the temptations and fallen for it, that because Jesus was willing to do that, that thing was more beautiful than all of the dark things that we of all of humanity. And so Christ's dying on the cross, because of his total and complete willingness to give everything he had for the Father. Because of that deep and powerful love, that that love was more beautiful to God than all of the darkness of all of mankind. And so because God was so pleased with, with Jesus, he accepts that sacrifice for all of our sins. Now, he didn't do this alone. Jesus didn't do this alone. He did this, he did this most of all with his mother. His mother was there at the foot of the cross. Can you imagine being Jesus' mom and watching him have to go through this terrible thing. So she suffered, suffered too. So she shared into that. And in a very real way, we all share in that. Every time we allow the sufferings in our lives to be united to his cross, right? So Jesus' is, Jesus is love on the cross, Jesus' is giving of himself on the cross, this is the thing that, that, that God most loves. Let me explain it this way. When you really love someone, you're willing to sacrifice for them. For example, if you really, really love someone, you might buy them a present. Well, what is a present? Well, a present is a sacrifice. I have to go work hard and get money or, 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 or work hard and make something beautiful for the person that I care about. Like, I've got to work. And I do this thing, not for me, but for somebody else. That's a sacrifice. Well, what's the biggest sacrifice that I could give? Well, the biggest sacrifice I could give is to die for you. 
that's the biggest one. Like if you were in the road and, and I saw that there was a bus coming your way, I have two choices. One, I could try and push you out of the way, but then I'm in the road and I could die. Or two, I could say, eh, I like you, but not enough to die for you and watch you as you get hit by a bus. Well, real love, the deepest love is the kind of love that would sacrifice. And I think you know that your mother and father would jump in front of that bus to push you out of the way without even flinching. And so would I. That's love. To be willing to die for someone is the biggest kind of love you can show. And Jesus died not just for one person, but for everybody, all at once. That's the kind of love that Jesus had, right? So that love, every time we see the cross, I know that it's kind of a sad thing to look at, but it reminds us just what Jesus was willing to do, just how much he loved us, that he was willing to take it all. Um, well, what were his sufferings? What, what did he undergo? Well, the worst part of his suffering was his agony of soul, that he felt all of our sins, that he knew everything that we had done. And that agony was, 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 was terrible. He was also scourged. That means he was whipped terribly. With, with, and the whip had like little metal spikes at the end. It was really, really hard, right? Um, he, he was crowned with thorns. They had stuck thorns into his head. And then they nailed him to a cross and they left him there to die. He died on Good Friday. It's the day before, it's, it's the Friday right before Easter. So that's the day that we celebrate it, right? That we remember this incredible day. So Good Friday is about Jesus' crucifixion. He died in a place called Golgotha. Um, this is near Jerusalem, which was, the, which was the major city and the religious center of the world uh, all around Jesus, right? So they took him to Jerusalem and they, they crucified him there on, the, on, this, on this place called Golgotha. By the way, just in case you're wondering, Golgotha means place of the skull. There's like a rock there that looked kind of like a skull, so that's why they named it that. So what do we learn from this? What do we learn from Jesus suffering and dying on the cross? Well, we learn how much God loves us by what he was willing to do for us, but we learn something else too. We learn just how bad our sins are. You know, we talked about sins the last couple of weeks. We talked about original sin and actual sin. And sometimes we can think sin's not a big deal. Well, the cross shows us that sin is a really big deal. Sin is such a big deal that this is what it took to fix the problem. That it's, sin is so bad that Christ had to die to fix it. And if that doesn't make you feel very, very serious about our sins, then I don't know what will. So there are three things I want us to learn about from the cross. If we can learn these three things, we'll understand the cross better than just about anybody in the world. And here's, what, here's the three things we can learn. Number one, that God loves man. He loves us. He loves us so much that he's willing to become a human and die the most horrible way for us to show us how much he loves us. Two, that sin is evil. The sin is so bad. Sin is so terrible that this is the only way that God could fix it. Was to do it was to was to was to allow that horrible all the evil of that sin to fall on 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 himself in Jesus, and the third thing we can learn is that our sins have a cost, that there's a price for the things that we did wrong, right? Like if you go in a store and you knock over something, you have to pay for it, right? If you break something, you've got to pay for it. Well, when we sin, we break something. We break our relationship with God. And what need, how much it costs to fix that is the cross. That's how much it costs. It's very, very, very important to, for us to realize just how big a deal sin is. Right? Um, so, uh, what do we mean? Uh, now, after, after Jesus died, we, we had in our creed, we say he descended into hell. And sometimes people can be confused about this. Um, so let me, let me just read this part of the creed. If you go to Mass, you hear this every single weekend. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. I believe in the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> but I believe in Jesus, 
who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the hell, and on the third day he rose again. Now, I bring this up because when we talk about Jesus' death, and we, we talk about it from all the things that happened, what happened immediately after sometimes confuses people. They think, wait a minute, Jesus was a good man. Why did he go to hell? Well, when we're talking about hell, we can talk about it in two ways. We can talk about hell as the place where the dead go. This would be before Jesus' cross. The dead had to go somewhere. So they would talk about Sheol or, 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 or hell. But it wasn't hell as like the place of punishment, just the place where people go. Another way it's said sometimes is Hades, right? Um, but people go somewhere after they die, that place they call hell. So when Jesus went to hell, he wasn't going to the place of damnation. He was going to the place where, 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 where the souls were. And there he released everyone who was good from the past and brought them to heaven with him. Think like all those really good people before Jesus, like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and St. Anne and St. John the Baptist, St. Joseph. I mean, so many wonderful, incredible people that died before Jesus died on the cross. So because they died before Jesus died on the cross, they couldn't go to heaven. So they were just kind of in limbo, waiting. They had nowhere to go. And Jesus came and set them free on that day, right? The first thing that Jesus did after he died on the cross was set free all of the souls of those good people who were trapped by sin and brought them to heaven with him. Now, you and me, we don't have to do that because Jesus already died for our sins. We can go straight to heaven. That's something that we can do. But that wasn't possible for everybody before Jesus died on the cross, right? So Jesus fixed that first. Um, so we call this the bosom of Abraham, right? So the, 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 in other words, Abraham was the, was the first man of faith. So everyone who was gathered around Abraham after their death, um, that's, that's what he went to. Um, after this, to really going to show us what happened, um, the most amazing thing ever happened. So Jesus died. They put him in a tomb. And while he was in the tomb, Jesus went and went into to, 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 to hell and set free all the captives, set free everybody who was, who was trapped by sin, who was good and loved God, and brought them to heaven. And then, after he did that, he came back to his body and rose from the dead. This was three days later. Three days later, Jesus comes back to his body and rises from the dead. Now, he rose on the, from the dead on Easter. That's the day we celebrate. So every Easter, you might, have, you, might have, you might think of Easter as eggs and the Easter bunny. But more importantly, this is the day we celebrate that Jesus rose from the dead. And by rising from the dead, uh, he shows us that he really can't did do what he did, right? He shows us he really is God. I don't know about you, but I don't know anybody else in all of history that rose from the dead. I know people who were resuscitated when they stopped breathing or, or something like that, like they were, they, they were dead for a few minutes, but the doctor brought them back. But Jesus was dead, dead, like three days dead, like completely gone dead. And Jesus comes back from the dead to show us that he really can do and really is exactly who he said he is. Let me make sure this is super clear. If Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then everything we believe is a lie. Everything we know about Jesus, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, it doesn't matter. But he did. He rose from the dead and showed us who he is. He said, look, here is the proof that I really am who I say I am, that I really am God made man. I will show you by rising from the dead. And when he rose from the dead, it was, it was totally some, he totally could act differently. He could walk through walls. He could, he could float in the air. He could, he could do walls. He could make people know who he was and make people not know who he was. It was, it, it was, it was, he had a, what we call a glorified body. <coughs> and this is wonderful. Because this teaches us that you and I, 
we too are going to rise from the dead, just like him. If Jesus died for our sins, and we let Jesus take the punishment of our sins, then we get to go to heaven, and we get to rise from the dead, just like he will. Now, we're not going to rise from the dead um, until the end of the world, but we'll, we'll go to heaven to wait. But when at the end of the world, we'll all get our bodies back, and we'll all rise from the dead. Yes? Um, all men will rise from the dead, but only those yet. So all men are going to rise from the dead. Good people, bad people, everybody. Everybody's rising from the dead. But only the people that God has called into heaven will go to heaven, right? Um, when, okay, so after Jesus rose from the dead, he spent some time uh, with his apostles, talking to them, having lunch with them. I mean, like regular things, but also really big spiritual things, like appearing in the midst of them when nobody's around and and talking to them on a road and suddenly disappearing. So um, feeding them breakfast and then going away. I mean, she's just, it was, it was kind of a mysterious thing that was going on. But about 40 days afterwards, um, Jesus goes back to heaven, body and soul. He takes his body with him, right? And uh, he ascends. We call this ascension because he goes, he ascends back into heaven. Um, why did he stay so long? Well, he stayed so long so that everybody would really know what happened. He didn't want anybody to think, um, well, you know, maybe that really happened, maybe it didn't. He appeared in front of thousands of people. Lots of people saw Jesus and saw him risen from the dead. So it wasn't like some secret. He wanted to be around long enough and see enough people for everybody to know what really, really happened, right? That he really, went, that he really did rise from the dead. And then after that, he finished teaching his apostles. He went back to heaven. He just went. Um, and there, from now on, he sits at the right hand of the Father. In other words, he sits with God in full authority. He's with God, uh, um, and with his Father, and he is God as the Son, and he's with the Holy Spirit, and he, he, he rules heaven and earth from there, right? Uh, bum, 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 bum. And that Christ will come thence to judge the living and the dead. And the last thing for us to remember is that Christ is the one who will judge us. Well, when we look at our life and we say what we did right and what we did wrong, um, we, we don't really have the authority to judge ourselves, right? Like I can't go, I can't, I can't go to the court and say, well, I don't really respect the judge here. I think I'm going to judge myself and say that I'm not going to go to prison. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, right? There has to be somebody else to judge us, somebody who's fair, somebody who's going to say, who's going to do the right thing every time. And there's nobody more fair and more right than Jesus. So Jesus is the one that will judge every single one of us, that at the end of our life, all of us will be judged. And from our judgment, that will decide whether we go to heaven or whether we go to hell. And that's a really big question, right? Something we want to know. I don't know about you, but I want to go to heaven. I want to spend my whole eternity with Jesus and Mary and all the saints. I want to spend my heaven uh, doing, you know, with all of the beautiful things that God has planned for me. And that's why I want to live that way now, here. I know my sins are a big deal because I can see what Jesus did on the cross to pay for my sins. So I know my sins are a big deal, but I'm hoping and trying to not sin anymore, I'm trying to be, be, be everything that God has called me to be so that I can, I can go to heaven, right? And I recommend that you do the same. Remember Jesus' cross. Before I close, I want to say one thing. Everything you ever want to know about what God has to say is in the cross. If you look at the cross, the cross will teach you everything you need to know about God. How much he loves us, what he's willing to do for us, how big a deal our sin is, how much we should love others. Everything you want to know, you can look to the cross and find the answer. So if you ever have a prayer, if you ever have a prayer and you want to know what God would say to you, what God is saying to you, pray about what you're saying. Tell God about what you're thinking. And then look at the cross and say, ask yourself, what is God telling me through this? Is he telling me that what I'm going through is hard and he understands because he was there too? Is he telling me 
that he loves me, I'm not, and even though it's hard and even though it's scary? Is he telling me that he's going to take care of everything for me? Everything that we want to know, and the answer to every single prayer we'll ever have, is all in the cross. So I encourage you to spend some time looking at the cross, thinking about the cross, thinking about what Jesus did for us. It's really the most amazing thing that's ever been done. May God bless you this week. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. And until then, God bless you.